Hey everyone, Alex Coach Fans coming at you guys with another video. Today's gonna be another podcast in relation to Ultraman Z and the recent news that has been released. With me, joining me today, are a plethora of different Ultraman fans that I know you all can introduce yourselves. Hi. Hi everybody, Sean Zilla Productions here. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and subscribe to this man and me for other content shit like that. Hello everybody, it is Ryan Zetan here, and welcome to a podcast on the Alex the Kaiju Fan channel. I'm ADF Stuff. And I'm new around here, y'all can call me uh, Zio. There's not, nothing notable to say about me. Hey guys, my chauffeur that were here with all these motherfucking fans, Ultraman from Ultraman series. And I am for the Dead Channel and here with doing this podcast with Alex the Kaiju fan with a bunch of fucking Ultraman fans. So I hope you all enjoy this podcast and let's do this shit because I'm tired. All right. So, Super Riot Productions, the illustrious company responsible for Ultraman, have released a new video about Ultraman Z, displaying not only Ultraman Z's upcoming transformation devices and fusions, but also some potential characters and shots that actually come from potentially the first episode. So what did you all think about this video? We could start off with Sean Zilla Productions. What did you think overall? Eh. No surprise, really, that, hey, they're bringing out Z. But... I'm kind of surprised that they're bringing back the fusion trend, though it's been only like a few years since G. And. Okay. Yeah, they. I don't know why they already basically give him off three forms, otherwise, his main form is probably going to be like. similar to what happened to Orb, but, anyways. I kind of surprised they brought back that one robot thing and Wyndham because it's been ages for them. It's called Star 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 Star. Star. Sorry, I haven't watched much of Ultra Seven, so he's an Ultraman Leo. Oh, <laughs> well, anyways, that that was pretty good. Some of the shots were kind of fresh, new, and. Well, what can I really say? Because it's Super Mario Productions. It's Ultraman. So, it's a new thing with, for a new show. So, A. And the fusions. The only one I really find interesting is the Gamma Future or whatever. But hopefully we'll get to that more. So, who's next? Alright. Um, so... When I woke up, I woke up to a bombardment of messages and replies, and I learned that, oh my god, an Ultraman Z, tr Z trailer came out, like, an hour af after I fell asleep. <laughs> so, it was like, oh, this is, uh, this is, this seems to be interesting. Um, I was reading, I was w looking at most of, like, the stuff that was revealed, and then I watched the, the trailer, um... I, and there's many things about this series that, you know, surprised me for the better and for the worst. Um, I'll get more into depth when we get into, like, if we get more into depth of those specific topics, but there's stuff that excites me, and there's, there's stuff that worries me very much. That is all for my thoughts. When I first saw the trailer, uh, it's, it's, a Okay, I'm gonna go to the elephant in the room here and say that the medals, um, a lot of people is gonna compare it to Kamen Rider O. Everyone knows that. It also uses three medals and combine them. I, they probably took some exploration of the medals, but uh, hey, super productions, I guess. The, the forms itself, 
the what's what's the form the red one the fully red one the, the one that looks no, like no but it kind of looks like red man yeah it looks like red man and it's jacked it is Z in that form looks like he's on like three pounds of steroids I want to see and how and my I think I guess my favorite form uh, is the Tiga Dan Nagaya one because I grew up with those three and uh, yeah the thing that's just my thoughts is just the forms look cool and the medals stuff is gonna get some Kamen Rider fans uh, ablaze you yeah? um, know overall I'm pretty optimistic about this series I think it looks pretty good I'm Kind of disappointed we're having the whole fusion gimmick again, but every, pretty much everything else I think seems pretty promising so far. That's pretty much it. All I have to say. I was going to say something else, but I think I'll save it for later when we go into more detailed topics. Uh, when I first saw the video, uh, I was pretty disappointing. Like they brought back the fusion team. They would have end with the, the fusion team after Geek series, but uh, they brought back the fusion uh, team again. It was like, oh, hey, fusion again. Nothing surprising. Ah, uh, so right. Come on, you can't be that lazy. But yeah, I like these designs. I mean, yeah, it's kind of shame that it's fusion, but I really, I really like the the design of his fusion. Looks pretty cool. So well, um, yeah, that's all. I I have other things to say about, but I'm not gonna say right now because I'm ready for you guys say the topic for what we're gonna talk about. So yeah, that's all. All right, and last but certainly not least, of course, yours truly, Alex. So I have the really comedic opportunity of actually staying up late at night for the time that this promotional video came out. I believe that when this video came out, it was one or two o'clock in the morning for me. So I was jumping on the video and watching it and saying, okay, this, I was about to go to sleep, but now I don't think I actually am going to be able to sleep because a new Ultraman video came out and it would be a poor decision for me to go to sleep right now. So <clears throat> I watched the video and I was pretty interested with everything. I think that Ultraman Z definitely brought a lot of the predictions that fans were hoping for to life, which I'll go more in depth about. And I just thought it was overall really interesting. Yeah, I noticed that Gamma Future, the Tiga Dyna Guy fusion, definitely seems to be a fan favorite because people love Ultraman Tiga. So that's one of the reasons why people really that's like it. Huh? That's not why it's my favorite, but we'll get to that. Oh. Let me other people. Like Zeo Officer. Alright. Uh, I just grew up with Tigo. That's why I love him so much. That's my first soldier, man. So now we're going to be talking about the fight. Just a real quick discussion about the fight between Ultraman Z and Ultraman Zero. So what did you have well, to say? Well, the fight, yeah, I kind of figured it was probably some kind of training because Zero was kind of taking it lightly, and you know how it was with Zero and Leo training and Taiga and Taro, but eh, we kind of get a glimpse of what could happen in Z. Then again, Zero just pulls off a lot of the stuff that we see in the trailer but really don't see in the show but overall i think the fight was kind of interesting it's just well and i'm stuttering a lot today but i thought it was good somewhat i just hope that it could have gone a little all out more but hopefully we'll see that in the trailer uh, in the first episode of z um, there really isn't much to say about that specific subject because it's 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 one of those like training fights that you know Zero and Z had really, and it's I have a feeling it's going to be just for promotion for promotion and not really actually going to be a 
part of the series because they usually like to have um, a bunch of promotional fights going on. Like with uh, Ultraman Orb, they had uh, for when they were doing the Hurricane Slash stuff. They they sh- when they showed off they showed off uh, Ultraman Jack fighting Nako, which was never in the series. And then with Ultraman G, they showed off Acro Smasher fighting Telestan, in which that that wasn't. That was not in the series at all. It was just a promotional fight. So I assume this is just practically the same. But I do feel like they're they are gonna go a little bit in depth with Zero's relationship with Z or Z. And um I hope I hope they go a little bit into depth with it. Um tight while still keeping, you know, Zero not as, you know like not having Zero appear in every episode. Taiga did a good job with the idea that Taiga is Taro's son, where Taro was in it, but never really appeared, and that Taiga, Taiga's, you know, it's, it's more than just Taro's son, that he's his own Ultraman, and people should, you know, recognize that. So I hope it's something similar to, to Zet, where he's not the, he's not the, uh, pe- where he, the people don't just look at him as the people of Ultraman Zero, but rather as his own entity. That's all for my thoughts. Um, I'm fine with Zero returning, personally. I've already talked about this on my channel, but, you know, he's not the first Ultra to constantly make so many appearances because Seven and Zoffy had a similar role in the Showa era. And I personally really like the idea of him training Zet because, obviously, he was trained by Leo, who was trained by Seven, so it feels kind of like a passing of the torches thing which makes sense considering the whole theme in the past shows of like the bonds between different generations and everything um i'm hoping that like like ryan said he zero won't be in every single episode maybe have a few flashbacks mentions and stuff but and i have a feeling that's probably what will happen since jeed is also in this so if Zero is making regular appearances as well, I might get a little busy. Um, I do hope, however, that um, again, since you know he was trained by Leo, who was trained by Seven, I do hope that does mean that we'll get a, a scene of um, Zero trying to run over Zets with a jeep. Uh, that's pretty much everything I have to say. There really isn't anything a lot to say besides... Uh, how long is the training with Zed going to be? Because, as we all know, Zero, as overrated as he is, is pretty powerful as an Ultra. If Zed gets trained for a long time, then Zed is probably going to be one of the stronger uh, new generation Ultras because this is Ultraman Zero we're talking about. He beat Belial in the first movie, who, might I remind you, beat almost all the show Ultras simultaneously. So... It's just how long the training session is going to be. And let's see how uh, powerful Zed can be. That's it. Uh, to be honest, I, I don't have much to say about it. I just, I just didn't care about it. Didn't really care about it. Alright, and then on to me. So, I personally found the short, I guess you could say, scuffle between Ultraman Z and Ultraman Zero to be really riveting because of the fact that it took place in space, and I noticed, I'm not sure if it was just me, but the set they were fighting on looked really practical, as if the terrain was made on an actual set, but the background looked as if it was a green screen, so I thought that was pretty interesting. Maybe that's just me too much looking into the technical aspect of the fight, but I thought it was overall really interesting, and I noticed that when Ultraman Zero gently tapped against Z's chest, it made the Godzilla 1954 stomp sound effect. For those of you Godzilla fans, you might have referenced or noticed that sound effect. What's pretty interesting is that the same sound effect was actually used for Ultraman in the Ultraman X movie. So, yeah. I don't know why. I just find it really funny whenever I hear that sound effect. Because I associate it with Godzilla, especially the original one. And then I hear it with Ultraman. And it's just interesting that they use that sound effect. But yeah. But without further ado from the short fight, we can talk about all of the fusions that are going to be appearing, starting first with 
Alpha Edge. This Ultraman Z transformation takes Ultraman Zero, Ultra Seven, and Ultraman Leo. So, Sean, let's start off with your thoughts on the first fusion that is shown to us. Honestly, when they revealed that fusion, it kind of really surprised. It really surprised me how they really brought back the fusion. Because I'm just like, wait. Well, Alpha Edge, I'm just like, wait, okay, so we're going to see his power forms. Yeah, go figure. And when they demonstrated how it's going to be done, I'm just like, at a loss for words, that they're bringing back the fusion idea. At least they're not slamming back, whatever. At least they're not just like, slapping polymerization and bringing it out, whatever. But, it kind of explains how the riser, new riser, why it kind of looks like that, you know, with the dots and everything. And I'm just like, wait, how are you going to transform with that? And when they show how, I'm just like, oh, so that's how it works. And the fusions, I'm just like, hmm, okay, pretty cool. Alpha, no, Alpha Edge in general is just like, I, I personally just don't like it. If I had to come up with some of the worst fusion forms on a, in a list, that thing would probably be somewhere in the top five. Because it kind of looks like an Orb Merriam Slugger ripoff. Because Sluggers are short, including the middle one. It's a little too bulky. Or a little bit bulky. Too bulky, honestly. Yeah, I never said that, but it's just meh. Um, me, uh, I'm looking at the the design right now to get a reference. Um, it, I think it looks all right for a fusion form. Uh, before I get to him, I want to talk about my opinion on like the, the fusion form. This is one of the things that I was kind of worrying about because it's like really you're gonna bring the fusions again. Like I'm like I know Orb I thought Orb did it well and yeah G was pretty much just Orb pretty much what Orb did, but I think that still with, did it with fine. The capsules and the with right, the capsules. I think it was yeah. just a little too much. But for but still for what it is, I think it's kinda of fine. It's still fine. But it did, I don't don't I didn't I don't think we really needed it back for a third time. When I saw the uh, the henshin device for the first time, I immediately knew something was going to something was off. Like, okay, he's gonna use like the henshin. He's gonna he's gonna, he's gonna have like very long henshins or something like that. Um, I'm really hoping that they're not gonna be that long. I'm really hoping they're not gonna be that long. I'm really hoping they're just like similar length to Taiga and whatnot. Uh, and whatnot. Uh, but anyways, to Alpha Edge, um, I think the one thing I will I do like about it is that it is a fusion of Seven, Leo, and Zero. You know, they could have just went the simple route and had the original Ultraman put in there somewhere, but they did not, which was cool. Um, they uh, they chose they chose three Ultras that had a very big big importance to uh, to the. Um, uh, um, to the uh, zero, to the you know the the zero, that kind of like little storyline going on. You got uh, seven, who trained Leo, then zero, and then Leo trained zero, and now zero's training set. So it's a really cool idea to have the three two three together. Um, I also, um, the, as for design wise, I think it looks all right. You know, Sean Zed pretty much just looks like a discount of Miriam Slugger, and uh, that's not really a good thing, because it reminds me of Fight Orb, which I really don't like at all, um, but uh, Miriam Slugger was alright, so yeah, but it, well, it's not really a design that I scream over, and you know, this one is basically just a, this, this looks like a Miriam Slugger a little bit too much. Uh, that is all from my thoughts for old Alpha Edge. Before we move on, I would like to I would like to point out another thing I forgot to mention. I like the idea of using Zero, Seven, and Leo as the first triplets, uh, first pair or 
three pair whatever of ultras in the first fusion because it brings back and it takes us to important ultras in relation to zero i like that idea how they just like started off with unlike ryan i would not really put the original ultraman there because it kind of would just mess everything up oh yeah no i agree there yeah because Zero is basically his mentor. Zero, well, Seven is Zero's father, and I'm not sure where Z comes from. So I'm guessing somewhere at, at like, Son of Zero or something like that, just to put out a random guess. Because he's got that one slugger that looks like Zero's. And then there's Z Leo, who trained Zero. So, yeah. Coming at a full circle here with whole, the whole Zero thing. Yeah, um, I pretty much agree 100% with what Ryan and Sean said about the choice of the three ultras. Um, like I said, kind of going back to what I said earlier about passing the torch and the bond between generations. So, um, like I said, I'm not really very infused about the idea of them bringing back fusions because, you know, with all of it, obviously at the end of the day, it's it was just to sell toys, but it also had... A thematic purpose because Guy was afraid of using his true form because he didn't want to hurt people again. So it made sense why he relied on the power of other Ultras and it was something that Juggler would use to torment him. And then with Jeed again, it made sense um, because he couldn't access his true form. Here, it just feels like they're regurgitating an old idea that has pretty much run its course. It's like when X brought back Spark Dolls, you know, you'd already have them in Ginga and Ginga S. There was no real reason to bring them back for X. Um, At least they brought back, you know, they gave the Star Spark Dolls a purpose of the series, though. Like, they're not just there and people just don't notice how they're just, like, come to life or whatever. They actually gave the Spark Dolls and X a purpose to be there. That's a fair point, I guess. I haven't seen X in ages. I'm waiting for the Blu-ray to arrive. But, um, okay. but yeah, Alpha Edge um, is probably my least favorite out of the three fusions because it's basically just Zets, but with some red and more silver on him and two extra sluggers. It, because with Orb and Jeed, um, pretty much all their forms looked drastically different from their base form, and they all had pretty interesting designs. But with this, um, with Zet's fusions, the only form that really stuck out to me is Beta Smash. Um, one detail I do appreciate about Alpha Edge is the fact that they made his eyes um, kind of like boxy, and narrow compared to his usual circular eyes because obviously Zero, Leo and Seven had pretty narrow boxy eyes. I think that's a nice detail but other than that it's it's fine, it's adequate, it's serviceable, that's pretty much it. That's all I have to say. To me there's really nothing that much going on with the design. Um, here's something that I wanted to point out. The top half of Z and the uh, Z's top half is blue and lower half is red, almost just like uh, zero. So I guess that's where they got this color color scheme from. The top half is blue and the bottom rest is red. Um, the design itself is really nothing notable to talk about. It looks like a default from the fault from Ultra. Um, there's there's really nothing to talk about, you no know, training each other and all that. So yeah, that's that's just my thoughts. Um, Alpha Age and nothing much to say about it. It's pretty predictable. The fusion material like the Seven Zero and Leo. Yeah, it's pretty predictable to have those three there because of, of the whole Zero thing. But Seven, who is his father, and Leo, who's his master. Of course, we have to get Zero there. Yeah, it's pretty predictable. The fusion materials and the designs, like yeah, like Ryan Shan said, it's pretty much uh, Orb, Emilio, Slugger, Rip It Off. 
And the only thing that bothers me on that form, it's, uh, I mean, on that field or form, uh, whatever, it's that uh, they add too metal on on the design. I mean, it, it doesn't it, it doesn't ruin the entire design. It's just it's just make it look a bit weird. Yeah, yeah, but that's it. All right, and now it's my turn. So in my opinion, Ultraman Z Alpha Edge is definitely the weaker bunch for the fusions for me. I definitely agree that it looks very similar to a Miriam Slugger from Ultra Fight Orb. And if you actually compare the stance that Ultraman Z Alpha Edge is currently in along with a Miriam Slugger, you can definitely see that the poses are very similar as they are both based off of Ultraman Zero's signature pose from the Revenge of Belial movie. So I definitely find it... A little bit disheartening that Super Riot Productions has sort of gone back in a circle. But I will give Ultraman Z Alpha Edge credit for this. There's something that Sean mentioned that I was actually going to mention myself, and that is the narrative behind this form is that it all comes back full circle. You have Ultra 7 who taught Ultraman Leo, Ultraman Leo taught Ultraman Zero, but Ultra 7 is also the father of Ultraman Zero. So from a writing standpoint, everything has come back full circle, it rhymes like poetry, and therefore, for me at least, it makes sense that all three of these ultras would come together to make a fusion. That still doesn't necessarily excuse the design for me, I still think that the design is inherently flawed. To be honest, I have a hard time distinguishing the difference sometimes between Alpha Edge and the Beta Default form, because they're practically the same color. But I will say this though, I, I think it's just interesting that all three of these ultras come together to make this fusion. I think that's really nice that Leo is returning in a fusion along with Ultra 7, likewise with Zero in some shape or form, but I just think the design is too much just like uh, a Miriam Slugger, even the pose is the same, and it's definitely one of the weaker forms for me. But yeah, without further ado, if unless anyone has any more to say about Alpha Edge, we can move on to Beta Smash. This fusion takes the original Ultraman, Ultraman Ace, and Ultraman Taro to make. So we'll begin with Sean Zilla on his thoughts on this fusion. Ah yes, here we are. Mm, I am honestly very disappointed. Because we went from a red and blue Ultraman to a completely red... Well, not completely, but... Semi-complete red Ultraman with some silver accent to it, and he kind of looks like red a red man wrestler, if you look at it. And how they showcased him, him tightening his ass and showing him showing off the abs and whatever, you're they're just like trying to challenge Ultraman Titus here, like, <laughs> bruh. I do not like the ears, however, and the eyes do not. Fit well with his form. I'm just like, <laughs> very disappointed. Then the fusion materials. There we get the original Ultraman. I'm just like, well, my thoughts are just honestly, I don't think Ultraman should just be a fusion material thing anymore. That say because. It does not work well with this form, because there are some fusion forms I have seen with some materials that kind of don't mix well. I don't really see being a part of, and Ultraman is one of them in this particular case. Ultraman Taro, well, I can kind of see it because you get, like, the whole red color and whatever, and uh, Taro was kind of a... Speed fighter or something like that. No, Ace. Yeah, I can kind of see Ace being a material for this thing because Ace was very brutal if you've seen his show. Because, well, plus, I just think Ace is a little. It kind of makes sense for me to put Ace as a material and somewhat Taro too, but I just hope that you know, the one thing that they should have done is also not make this thing look too much like red man and make it more of a challenge for ultraman titus or ultraman orb thunder breast star because well and they could have just replaced the original ultraman for something else as fusion materials <laughs> they could have replaced jack i think 
I don't see Jack being there too, because, well, where can you find Jack in this form? Exactly. I mean, they could replace with Jack because, like, Jack came before Ace and Tower, like, to, uh, 1971, like, uh, Ace 1972 and Tower 1973. It would make a bit more sense to have Jack there. Well, honestly, I think it would have been Zoffy to be a better choice because, like, oh, yeah, Zoffy's a great choice because yeah, is, uh, he if helped. You look around his chest, yeah, you, see. The timer, you can kind of see the dots on his thing or whatever you call them. Oh, yeah, the metals. Metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great point, Sean. Weird point. Zoffy would make a better choice than the original time because, yeah, they. And sorry, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. You're fine. Well, anyways, anybody next? I guess I'm next. Uh, so Beta Smash. Um, I I think it looks fine. I think it looks cool. Um, it kind of looks like a cross between Red Man and Trigger, a little bit. If he was, you know, he ate his vegetables much like Titus, but um, um, there really isn't much to say with his design wise, you know. But I think the thing I do want to talk about is the fusion components. Um, original Ultraman Taro and Ace. Um, Ultraman Taro really not much to say because it's Taro, and the same for the original Ultraman because, um. Um, you know, you know, aside of being, you know, kind of expected to have an original Ultraman sort of component in one of these forms, since you know he is the 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 series mascot. So it it make a lot of so I could so it's kind of like okay, I can kind of see that. Well, I rather had someone else still, yeah, absolutely. But it, they had to put, but they really had to put original Ultraman here. This was. The form, but the thing I want to talk about most is Ultraman Ace because they started the fusion gimmick since 2016 around that time, and uh, at least in the shows, because I know I know there's a couple times in the games where they've done it, but none of them had any like None of them used Ace at all in the series in the shows. It was um, the only time I can think of is actually. Um, G, where they used him as the ability rather than a, uh, rather than the car rather than the full fledged uh, character. Oh, uh, fusion. Race. Race. But, um, but it's really cool to finally see Ace have that kind of like attention that he hasn't really gotten since for such a long time. Um, it shows it shows that you know, oh hey, like because for a while Ace was the forgotten member of the Ultra Brothers, you know, because everyone at least had appeared since Orb, and then you have Ace over here, who hadn't appeared in a little while, so it's really cool to finally see Ace get some recognition from this. So, uh, huge props to bring back for trying to implement Ace. Yeah, what's up, Sean? Didn't Ace appear in Ultra Galaxy Fight? No, he, uh, well, yeah, that was like, but that was like a little cameo. And he's a, and he appeared in a, a fight victory. You were forgetting. Well, that's 2015. I'm talking about uh, after Orb. Oh yeah, sorry. sorry. But okay. you were forgetting that he was using on in, on the uh, Slugger Ace on a future fight. Uh, but if you don't coin that, that's fine. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't. I yeah. That's why I said yeah. Because I I said I know that they used the video game. They used it a couple times in the video games. So I I didn't count that. Um, personally, I'm, I do, I like Beta Smash quite a bit. Um, the components to me make sense because, you know, in the trailer, they show him flexing his muscles. He's not to the same extent as, like, Thunderbreastar or Ultraman Titus, but he is kind of buff compared to most others, so his components make sense because Ultraman, you know, not a lot of people remember, but he was a pretty, like, his fighting style was pretty similar to a wrestler. Um, Ace, as Sean's already mentioned, was pretty brutal. And Toro, you know, he would always, 
a lot of the times when he appeared, he'd you know like, uh, fly into the fly from the air and kick a monster. So those three components, you know, make sense for what's supposed to be kind of the strongman form. So I, I disagree that it could have been Jack or Zothy instead because Jack, um, his fighting style was. I don't know, it's tough to describe, but it. I think Ultraman, with his wrestling fighting style, makes more sense. And Zofi, again, um, same thing. The only thing about him that really meshes with this is the studs on the chest area. Other than that, I think Ultraman was a pretty good choice. And I appreciate that rather than, you know, just saying. It, Rather than just staying um, for Alpha Edge, it's the it's the base form. We have to have the original Ultraman. They decided to, you know, wait at least one form before introducing the original Ultraman. And like Ryan said, it's nice to see Ace finally get some recognition. I like. I know a lot of people are comparing it to Redman, but personally, it reminds me kind of the of the. Um, prototype version of Ultraman Leo that was built with what would become Alien Valky's suit. And uh, I think it's pretty nice to see something similar to that finally come into realisation in a series. Alright. Mm, the, so the design itself, to me, I did not grow up with the Shaw Ultras. I grew up with the Hisei one, so I don't know the the combination, the three ultras make sense or not. But I can say that the design itself looks pretty simplistic. It's just two colors. Like the like original show uh, show ultras. It's just the silver and the red. And I don't know how but I felt some nostalgia in there because it reminds me of um Tiga. Tiga strong strong type strong mode and Dyna strong mode. Uh, them turning turning red and silver that kind of kind of reminds me of that uh, because you know it uh, it is Zed's strong form and just like the Dyna and Tiga it, it, they turn completely they turn red red and silver to become strong and I felt nostalgic about that um, other than that the design itself is just simple to me it's there's nothing like there's no like seven colors in this in the same model it's just Red and silver, classic design. So that's all I had to say. Yeah, beta smash. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it's a pretty badass design. It's actually my favorite of the Z form so far. It's I'm fine. I'm really glad to see a Ace be finally used as a fusion material. Yeah, because like Ryan say, he has been using in Orb and and Jeed. I mean, he's he's not been using Orb and Jeed series. But and I don't coin the fusion fight with Slugger Ace, and I don't coin uh, Gid using as a capsule as a finish. But yeah, it's finally great to see Ace uh, there as a fusion material. And um, and I kind of didn't like to see the original Ultraman again as fusion material because we got him, we got to see him on the Orb and Gid for a special ability on Primitive. Yeah, but it's kind of just that about since the Ultraman be, uh, start the whole thing. Yeah, um, but they, I, I kind of wish they, they put somewhere else. I mean, I kind of wish they put Jack, because, like, Jack's from um, the first show uh, from the uh, 70s, uh, 1971, then Ace is from 1972, and Taurus is from 1973. It will make a bit more sense. And if you guys don't agree with me with Jack, they could have put, I mean, Zoffy too, because of the medals. It will make a lot. It will make a lot more sense because the metal which they put Zoffy there, but yeah, and the head designs it reminds me a lot of Redman, and not just Redman. It kind of reminds me Pegia and Zeus, uh, Ultraman Zeard, and yeah, it's it's a, it's a really nice design. I like it a lot. Actually, yeah, you kind of do bring up the Zerd reference. Uh, he kind of does look like Zerth for two. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, to look like yes. yeah, that's all. That's all I have to say about this. Uh, actually, before we move on, there's just 
um, a couple more things I remembered. Um, it's not very noticeable, but you can actually see a few, I think, either orange or gold markings, and there's some black markings as well. Um, and that black I can see because Zet himself does have some black on him, but I don't understand where the orange comes from. A lot of the new Ultras have black on them, so it's typical that they would put some black on them. Yeah, I, I found with the black, but um, it, the orange doesn't make sense to me unless they're referencing the Ultra Dynamite, maybe, of Toro. But I think it would make more sense if maybe the orange markings were black because they're slightly less prominent than the black markings, and then the black markings were blue instead. So then that would be a little more, you know, details from the base form of that. Also, um, Personally, the mask, I know a lot of people are comparing him to Redman, but personally, I think more of a Ultraman Trevia, and therefore, in turn, Ultraman Trebius when I see him. Trebius. <laughs> um, go on, Alex. You can go on, Alex. All right, now it's my turn. So, a lot of people have been stating that this looks similar to Redman, and I understand that sentiment. I can see definitely where they're coming from. But if you take a look to what this mode is able to do, he's able to incorporate pro wrestling moves. So for me at least, and Ryan can probably relate to this, he reminds me of a luchador wrestler, and hopefully he incorporates different types of wrestling moves that you would see in the professional field in Ultraman, because if you really think about it, in a technical aspect, Ultraman is basically just wrestling, but with a set and effects. That's really what Ultraman Space is. Martial arts. That's yeah, true, because it's both fake. Yeah. But either way, though, I definitely understand the sentiment about Ace. I'm going to be honest, when I look at this form, I literally don't see Ace. I know Sean didn't see Ultraman, but I can see Ultraman in this design. I can see where the red in the chest aligns with the silver along with the stomach area. I can see where that comes from from Ultraman. And of course, the predominantly shade of red, that also comes from Taro. But with Ultraman Ace, on the other hand, I literally don't really see where Ace is coming from, to be honest. Well, I think he I has think. Like, Ace's brutality strength or something like that. Yeah, I think it, it would make... Hello? What? What? No, no, sorry. Um, I was going to say, I think it would make more sense if instead of the slugger still being there, he had the ultra fin that Ace has. Yeah, I was getting ready to say that because Ace has the fin as well as Taro, but unfortunately, I just thought the form was a little bit of a missed opportunity. Now, there is one moment in the promotional video where he pulls a Titus and literally clenches his posterior. <coughs> But for me at least, the physique reminds me a little bit more of Thunder Breastar, especially if you look at the shoulders and the arms. The shoulder pads really remind me of Thunder Breastar, as well as the fact that it's a little bit more hunched over. If you look at uh, this form, Beta Smash, he's definitely a little bit more hunched over than, say, your standard Ultra. So for me at least, he reminds me in terms of the physique a little bit more of Thunder Breastar because Titus was just really bulky. Whereas this is sort of a blend between not so bulky and still bulky. So it reminds me more of Thunder Breaster in terms of this physique. But that moment in the trailer really reminded me of Titus. And I will say this though. I am glad that the original Ultraman is no longer the default fusion. For so long the default fusion has always been just the original Ultraman. If you look at all the way back from I believe it was Ultraman Ginga. The first ability he gets in Ultraman Gingo with his stream form is the Specium Ray that he uses. No, 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 that was Ultraman Taro. Use Taro first, then Ultraman. I know, but and I know Taro gave him the brace, but I meant the first Ultra that he actually used outside of Taro, because Taro was there since Gingo. Yeah, makes but sense. I, so either way, though, Ultraman was technically used first in Gingo S, because Taro, of course, was there from, since Gingo. I was saying the first real ability using Gingo S was the original Ultraman. And then if you look to Ultraman Orb, Ultraman is part of the fusion. Ultraman Geed, Ultraman is part of the fusion as well. And they even make a joke out of this in the Ultraman Geed movie where 
Riku and Guy are transforming, and the and the original Ultraman literally appears twice right next to each other <laughs> because they both use the original Ultraman. So I'm really <laughs> excited to see that Ultraman has managed okay. to make it a step up and no longer just be the default go-to form. Yeah, I kind of bored see the original Ultraman fusion material all the time. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I just wanna, I just want to say, um, so, sorry, sorry. Just, just real quick, just real quick. You know a sad thing about it? This year is 80th, 40th, 40th anniversary, and, they, and yet they didn't use 80 as fusion material. It's, I'm pretty disappointed with that. Well, they they to, over, to, yeah, to they, be they, fair. They had the opportunity to use 80 as fusion material. To be fair, they didn't use Dyna as fusion material for G, nor did they use Gaia or Agul for, for fusion material in Rube. I, the material... Uh, Items of Rube, I wouldn't really count as fusion materials, they're just like elements to give them different. Oh, yeah, you know what I mean. You know, they weren't using components. Elements, with elements yeah. such with pass ultras, that's it. Alright. But back to what I was saying, though, just to wrap it up about Beta Smash. I definitely could see a lot more of Zoffy, especially with the breastplate that's near his color timer. That definitely reminds me of Zoffy. If anything, because the original Ultraman has so many influential successors, they could have literally fit Ultraman 80 in there, and in my opinion, it wouldn't have really made much of a difference, because so many Ultraman... Yeah, that's what, so what? Yeah, yeah, that's what I say. They should have put 8 there, because it's his 40, 40 anniversary, but yet, no. Yeah, I, I get you. But on the plus side, I'm glad that the original Ultraman has made a step up. He's no longer the first default form. Like he was for so long, but now he's managed to make it to second form. Which is pretty funny, because in Ultraman X, he was the movie form. Which is pretty cool. But either way, though, unless we want to say anything more about Beta Smash, we can move on to some people's favorite of the bunch, Gamma Future. Oh, this future um, oh yeah. I would love to start this off with Gamma Future. So this future... I pulled up, too. So this yeah. Go on. I'm sorry, I just wanted to tell the viewers though which fusions are used. So this fusion takes the high the Heisei Trinity of Ultraman Tiga, Ultraman Dyna, and Ultraman Gaia to make this wizard ultra. So yeah, Sean, you can start first. I can honestly see why this ultra is the fan favorite of the fusion bunch here. It's colorful. It looks Hell a lot decent than what we have seen so far. It's just, well, I really don't know how to really put words into this because he actually looks a lot better and is it the design's actually a lot more decent. We have like, if you look at a, his chest plate and all, it kind of. I don't know if you can really see it or not, but it really takes a lot out of both Dinah and Gaia. Maybe a little bit of Tiga if you can try to put, if you want to think about it. But it mainly for me just takes a little after Gaia and is like mainly gold from Dinah. Otherwise, I really don't see how it would probably take from Tiga. The only thing Tiga I can really see is the gold on his like little bit of. The little bits of gold there and there, and the chest plates, like, and the purple, which is something you can really see right on the legs, right at the sides. What, where you can prop now, where you can see Dinah, probably you can tell by the chest plate, which is also with Gaia, along with some. Of the other features, because man, man, I really started this off wrong. Well, fuck. <laughs> All right, this design's kind of just like it's a lot better than any of the rest, and I would put it as my number two fusion form, because why not? Now, the fusion components for this one, I'm. it's a big step up from the first two, where they just kind of, like, put, 
like ultra fusion forms have nothing but shower ultras and this one they just kind of like put tina tika dina and gaia in there because why not we get the trinity from the ginga fusion brace which we see in ultraman x and in the superior eight movie if you watched it you can kind of see the team up with the three of them and they eh. now the magic and all from what i've heard i really don't see how this thing could really bring up the magic or something like that because it's just like i honestly just don't see it yeah sure there was that one witch episode in ultraman taiga but that was taiga for an ultraman to use magic aside from his ultraman powers it's just I don't know, and I honestly feel sorry for this thing, because if, if I am not the first one to ever think about it, he, uh, Snap he did, they're probably going to make those things out of him. Ryan? Oh, okay. Oh, man, I have a lot to say about this form, because yeah, that's uh, my it's, it's my favorite of the three, for very biased reasons. Um... <laughs> I think the main reason why I love this form so much is the fusion components. Tiga, Dina, Gaia. Um, Alex, you might remember this when we were talking about the an Ultra Galaxy fight, but somewhere in that podcast I stated, oh, well, I hope for the next series they manage to have, you know, some reference, you know, some, like, nods to, you know, Tiga through Galaxy as, you know, Ruben Gaia really didn't have that much much, especially Taiga, where it was mainly just Showa and New Gen. And then, and then, like, right after this podcast, we get we get Ultraman, the Ultraman Z reveal, and then we see Tiga Dyna Gaia, who's like, and it's like, oh my god, they actually, they actually did it! I, I literally, I literally was so happy when I saw that Tiga Dyna and Gaia were getting a fusion. It's like, oh my god, they remember the, the existence! <laughs> Uh, but um, it's really cool that they finally. Uh, well, mainly mainly Dinah and Gaia because you know Tiga was you know a crystal component in Rue, but um, Dinah and Gaia really haven't gotten that much aside of Orb the Origin Saga. So it's really cool that they finally get give some more attention to those other ultras. Um, um I also really um, as for design wise, I think it looks great. Um, it fully encompasses the Tiga, Dinah, and Gaia trio together into this Z form, to the Z form, which I think it blends all three really well. You get the Dinah head, the Dinah looking head thing with, you know, with the two side things. Then you get the, um, you know, it also kind of looks similar to Gaia's thing. Then you got Tiga's, the Tiga, the purple that Tiga has on the, uh, on the suit. And then all three all sh all three happen to share a uh, golden chest protector um, on on there. So it's really cool that it, it, it you know manages to embody the first three Heisei Ultras entirely. And it's and I really hope that for this series they manage to use a monster from said from said three series like a, either like you know Golza or something like that. To debut this form because then it would be like like the greatest thing ever. But, but <laughs> um, I, I personally love COV personally, but oh well. Um, but still, uh, Gamma Future, or as I like to call him, Tika Dinagaya form is my favorite of the bunch and is definitely definitely the one that I like to talk about the most. And it's probably my favorite reveal of Z so far. And that is it. Have to say. Um, I uh, really like Gamma Future as well. It's tough to say whether it's my favourite because Beta Smash was also pretty good in my opinion. Um, I'm not sure where the magic thing comes from. My guess is that it's because Gaia is supposed to embody the spirit of the earth and 
I guess they think because it's not space, that means it must be magic. But Tiger and Dino are both pretty much rooted in science fiction for the most part, so that doesn't really go with me. But that aside, I do like the design. I don't know, I really like the use of um, colours. I think purple is a pretty underused colour in Toku. Alright, so that was wild, okay. So I'm so uh nostalgia bias here but I really like this form. Because Tiga Daina Daya, I grew up with those. Um and seeing it just combined fused into one is just beautiful because Daina has been fused as Saga before. Gaia and Tiga do not. So seeing these three combined into one is just it makes my kitty bones just squeal in happiness. Um the design it the design looks cool. It's, it, I don't know how to say it, but it looks cool. The purple um it looks it looks like water or uh like it looks like a canvas getting splashed with purple, red and black. The purple is obviously from Tiga, not not I don't think there's any other ultras that uses purple besides Tiga. Um as as uh, someone has said, the these three all has one thing is common and that is the the chest plate, the the thing running down the color timer. Tiga has been used by Orb and it uh, has been used by Orb and RMB. So I think after this, Tiga is after probably after Z. If it still uses fast ultra powers, the next series probably need to lay off either need to lay off Ultraman and Ultraman Tiga because those two have had a lot have a lot of fusions and powers or all that stuff. So that's all I had to say. I really love this form. Uh, let's let's just say let's just see the the name of the form again. I guess I forgot. It's Gamma Future, right? Yeah. Um, bias with this form, so unleash your bias. I like it. I like the design. I'm I'm glad that they finally used Dyna and Gaia's fusion materials. Cause they didn't. They never did really use them on Orb and Geed. Just like Ace. Uh, and I and I still don't count the fusion fight thing, and yeah, kind of looks like uh, a bit, a bit. No, no, it doesn't. I would say that it looks uh, like or based on the building, but no, nah, it's it's it, it really doesn't. And I don't really understand the, the the title of wizards because I don't I don't remember seeing Tiga Dino Gaia having any magical abilities. So I don't really I don't really see why they put the title of wizards. I mean, it could have make sense they put like king uh, or Noah for that, but I know I know it will be so over uh, exaggerated if they put them. But if they put them, it will make the the the, t the title of uh, wizard wizards make a bit more sense because I don't remember Tiger Diamond guy have any. Uh, magical abilities. Uh, I and actually I don't think any ultra has this these abilities of of magic of magical abilities. So yeah, I don't remember any ultra of this franchise have uh, wizard ability until now. But basically, we we, we didn't saw the, his ability yet. So yeah, I don't yeah I don't really see the point of the use uh, this thing for that form. I t I think it would be better if they if he he used uh, the abilities of power and speed together. Um, I mean he has powers separately from uh, power uh, from pa Tiga's power type and Dino Strong type, and Tiga's Kai type and Dino Flash type, and more and more power from Guy Supreme Supreme. It would be nice, but yeah, I still don't understand the point of the wizards, the wizard. Yeah, that's it. Uh, All right. uh, Alex, before I give the thoughts, uh, is it cool if I say something real quick? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to say about the wizard thing. Um, I don't think it's a. I don't think it's going to be like 
oh, he has a mad, you know, he's like a wizard, like Gandalf Grey or something like that. I, um, from what I'm reading right now, it says this psychic form fights with mysterious powers. He is skilled at versatile beam attacks. So I assume this is going to be like, think of it like a uh, Pokemon for a second. Um, you know, you get, you know, you got physical attack and you got uh, special, you know, special attacks which are projectiles and whatnot. You got Beta Smash, who is, you know, looks to be the more physical of the bunch, and then you have Gamma Future, who happens to be the more projectile base of the of the three, and then Alpha Edge is right in the middle. So that's what I assume what they mean by magical and wizard like power. That is all. All right. And now it is my turn to talk about Ultraman Z, Gamma Future, the fusion between the three Heisei Ultras who came to solidify the 90s. So, for me personally, I think that all of you are missing one component. I hear everyone going back and forth on where does the magic come from, where is this telekinesis magic coming from, but I believe you folks forgot that Ultraman Dyna Miracle Mode actually existed. Oh my god, how... Oh my god, how I forgot that! The, the, copy, the, copy ability, the copy abilities from Dyna Flash type. I mean, Miracle type. I honestly don't really see that, but if I can relate the magic or anything, I would say it has to mainly involve, like some of y'all said before, Gaia's spiritual thing or whatever, and mainly from Giga's ancient times or his relations to some kind of... Maybe, maybe, maybe. So, Gaia is the spiritual embodiment of the Earth. Dina is his miracle mode. Tiga was the protector of Earth before humans came? Because no, Tiga is the only odd one, odd yeah. one out of here. He doesn't have, like, spiritual stuff. Yeah. I but, yeah, I like to, you, but, yeah, Alex, like you... But, yeah, you give a great point about Dina as miracle mode because of the... Because the only... The only ability that I can recall that it kind of looks like a magical ability is, is like the, the copies that mir Miracle type can make. But aside from that, I don't remember uh, using any magical abilities aside from the copies. Ultraman Dyna Miracle Mode had some other abilities. If you, if you watch the show, he used it several times in his fights. The thing is, though, is that he used Miracle Mode a little bit more than his Strong Mode. But either way, though, going back to Gamma Future, Zeo Officer made a very good point, and I was personally going to mention this myself, and that was the fact that Gamma Future looks as if you took an Ultraman suit that was blank, or canvas in his metaphor, and just splashed it with paint. And that is ultimately the reason why I just, regardless of my bias <laughs> for Ultraman Tika, Dinah, and Gaia, all three fantastic Ultraman shows, Dinah, in my opinion, being severely underrated, because I'm the only one that remembered Miracle Mode existed, but, um, Ultraman Gamma Future, the Z form, I really like the paint job. I think this is an absolutely phenomenal paint job. I'm gonna be honest, a lot of the Ultraman color designs, I'm usually indifferent about, because they're all painted through patterns and lines, but this form is just really unique in the way in which they designed it, and I absolutely love it. Now, a lot of people say it reminds them of Tiga and Gaia and Dinah, but for me at least, there's one aspect that really reminds me of Specium Zeparian, and that is, if you take a look to the, the chest plate, it actually has shoulder pads, just like Specium Zeparian. Ultraman Tiga, Ultraman Dinah, Ultraman Gaia never had shoulder plates on their armor for their chest, but Ultraman or Specium Zeparian did. So I feel that they definitely took that aspect from Ultraman or Specium Zeparian. I am really excited to see what this form can do. Not only does it take some of my favorite Ultras that I have loved since the Superior 8 movie as well as their respective series and combine them together at last, it was really refreshing to see because we don't really see a lot of magical type Ultras. Usually it's just you're either really strong or you're really fast or you're in the middle. But now we have a third element, which is magic, which I am absolutely excited to see how this plays out in the series. So yeah, if, unless anyone has anything else to say about Gamma Future, I'd say Gamma Future is definitely my favorite of the bunch. 
I have one thing to say. If I had all my thoughts gathered, I probably would have explained it a lot more like that, but eh, I just got a little too biased and couldn't think straight. Yo, Alex, I'd like to say one last thing for God Game the Future. Yeah. So... So you, when you said that uh, you don't you don't remember Tiga, Dinah, and Gaia having shoulder pads, well, you, we may have forgotten about Dinah Miracle, but you have seem to have forgotten about Gaia Supreme, who actually had shoulder pads. Yeah. <laughs> no. And we call ourselves Ultimate fans. Oh shit, Alex! <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> I like how I like how Alex is like, my fans. Okay. I like yeah. how Alex is like, well, you all seem to forget about Dynamo. Yeah, he completely forgot Gaia Supreme had the shoulder pads. Uh, but they weren't the same, you know? I mean, look, they're not the same, but still, but shoulder look, pads. Look, look, he does have shoulder pads, but Gamma Future has more armored pads. You get what I mean? There you go. Like there, a knight? Now, now, there you go. Now you, now, now you said it. That's, that's it's more, if you look, look at Spessium Zeparion's shoulders, and then look at Gamma Future. They're more similar look. to than Gaia, you know? Yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I just, I just, I just thought it'd be funny to point out that. <laughs> wow, you got me, you got me real good. But also, I like how they took the black from Gaia. All right, so moving on, we're gonna be talking about now. I would say probably some people's least favorite fusion in this upcoming series, and that is Ultraman Gade, Galaxy Rising. This Ultraman oh, Gade form to. Oh, this, no, this, no, no, no. Oh, oh my god. Ugliest, the, uh, that's the ugliest thing that I ever titled. This fusion. Oh. Has Ultraman Gade used the powers of Ultraman Ginga, Ultraman X, and Ultraman Orb? So let us begin. I know Masura has a lot to say. He's been waiting for this moment all day. But let's start off with Seanzilla. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. I'm right. gonna read the this form. Okay. Break There's yourself. literally a lot to say, and this is more of Masura's talk on this one, but. To me, it's just a little too much. I'm not sure where this rising thing came, rising galaxy comes from, but this one has definitely left me a lot of questions on how he got this form. But yeah, like what happened to his other fusion forms? I mean, doesn't he have his? Right. He, I, if you if you forget that it it say that the, his fusion rice broke, so that's why he gets his his new stupid toy. <laughs> that means we're stuck for this one. Oh god. Yeah. His new stupid toy. But still though, the fact that Riku has this thing now is just a little like. A little too overwhelming how he just like switches items so he could transform into this. I have to go now real quick. I'll probably be back. When I do get back, I'll talk about it a little more. All right. <laughs> uh, Ultra Man G, the Galaxy Rising. Um, how it's so weird to be saying. Ultraman G gets a new form in 2020. <laughs> um, because Orb didn't really have a new form uh, at any point. Didn't get a new form besides, you know, his his material. G's getting a new, new brand new spanking form in this series, which is really cool. Um, Design-wise, really not much to say about it. It's basically G with armor. And um, it, it's, it's, you know, it's really nothing to say, but um, I do want to talk about G appearing in Z because I know a lot of people, a lot of what Sean, Sean says, uh, said stems to what I wanted of, um, or something, something to bring up. I have a feeling Jeed's going to be like zero when, when Ultraman Jeed was still airing. 
where Zero is the mentor of sorts to Jeed, and now Jeed's going to be the mentor, or not the mentor, but more like a helper of of Z. And Mashua, uh, okay, I got scared for a second because uh, he unmuted himself, so I, I was scared he was going to unleash. No, no, don't worry, don't worry. You can't, you can't tell your penis, right? I'm not going to attack you. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, <yeah>. okay. <laughs> good. <laughs> don't worry, man. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> um, but, um, I, but, uh, I do, I do like it because I'm, I'm, I am excited to see Jeet in the series. Um, you know, uh, you know, it's really, you know, because you know, it's like I, I really like Jeet. He's, he's a cool, he's a cool guy, and seeing him appear is, you know, it's cool that they actually do, you know, that Jeet is getting some love and whatnot. You know, because when Zero, because when uh, Z was revealed, everyone was suspecting. Oh, the only reason they made Zero and Jeet Chronicle was just to have. Zero, <laughs> but uh, no, no, they actually showed off. You know, Jeet is actually going to appear, uh, and so I assume Galaxy Rising is going to be what Zero Beyond was in Jeet, and then Zero Jeet not having his fusion Jeet Riser, um, is like how Zero could not real, use his. Real quick, task. real quick, real quick, real quick. I guess the uh, if. His fusion rise is probably gonna come back on the Z movie. I know it's too early, but uh, I really think he's gonna come back on Z movie because I will be like, "Oh man, the return of Giz fusions." Oh no, I, I fully suspect that to happen. That's what I think. It's gonna be. Um, he's gonna have to use. He's gonna use the rest of his forms. At some yeah, point. just like just like Zero does on, on B movie. Yep. Exactly. So I can see that happening. Um. I think that's pretty much it. Um, I am kind of excited that I am excited that C G is, st you know, Jeed's getting some recognition even more than, um, yeah, I think even more than Orb has gotten uh, recently. So um, it was cool to see. Did you, forget, did you forget that Jeed doesn't have his own fight series and he doesn't have uh, an origin saga? Orb did have. Oh, oh no, things. I know, I know that, but I mean, like recently, like in like like nowadays. Rather than, you know, back in, like, when Orb was still a real thing. It, because Geet sucks, eh? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see um, Geet get this grand, brand new form. Also, also we all know that, uh, you know, just, you know, just, just a mess, just... Just to joke around and whatnot. This is abs Michelle's absolute favorite thing so far. So yeah, it's gonna be awesome. That is awesome. Nah, 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 nah. Okay, Mr. Sura, thanks for your contribution. Anyway, um, I personally am actually really excited to see um, Jeed return. It's no secret by now that I did not like his series at all. It's probably one of my least favorite Ultra series. Although I really like the character of Riku. You know, he's charismatic, he's enjoyable, he's likable, he's entertaining. And I know that his actor is really enthusiastic about Ultraman, so it's great to see him return. Um, and I do really like G's design for all of his different forms. So it's a shame that we're going to be stuck with G um, Final Rising or whatever it's called, the Galaxy Rising, because um, I do not like this form whatsoever. When I first saw this form, I had a similar reaction to uh, everybody in the hospital room when they saw me being born. It's terrible. I don't like it at all. It's it's, it's difficult. Describe, but there's just something about it. Like it doesn't look like G's head is on that body. It looks like it's been photoshopped on. It doesn't mesh. It's it's just a clusterfuck. Like I guess that the whole kind of bulky metallic kind of armor look is because of Ginga's crystals, which it's I don't really get a crystalline feeling from this, um, but I guess the more metallic, bulky kind of stuff is supposed to be a reference to X, but X didn't look like this chonky, you know, X wasn't a chonker, he was 
relatively streamlined, really. I'd argue that even Tiger and um, definitely Titus were bulkier than he is. Even even Beta Smash is a lot bulkier than this. I mean, than X, not than this. Nothing is bulkier than this. And there's something about it. It's, it's difficult to describe, but it looks almost like monstrous because I saw something. I don't remember if it was on Twitter or Discord, but somebody photoshopped G's head onto Grease's body, and that was pretty much exactly what this looks like. Like, you know, the patterns and markings is all, on his body is almost identical to um, to Grease, except that it's different colours. Like, I really am not a fan of this design, and I hope that um, when Jeed shows up, whether that be in the first episode, the second, or third, or whatever, I hope we at least get to see him fight in one of his form, one of his previous forms before his riser is destroyed. So, you know, we at least get to see a good-looking Jeed one last time. And that is pretty much all I have to say about this, um, frankly, awful design. Um, to me, to me, I only have one question. Why does Gid need armor? Because Gid has like five forms already and adding armor doesn't look anything, doesn't add anything. <laughs> this okay, armor... They, they, toys, they, they just want to sell toys, that's it. It's because they like, they feel like... They they don't want to like to recyclate old powers in the future shows, because that's not very cool. I, but that's just my that's just what I think. So uh, this okay, it, the armor looks like something that would purposely handicap someone, like uh, zero stack no armor. It looks like that kind of armor. It doesn't look like it can improve your, improve your performance. It, it's so bulky, it, it doesn't look like Geed at all. The, besides the head sculpture, it doesn't look like Geed at all. It lo if you edit the armor color of it, it kind of looks like an evil author, man, like a dark Zuggy, like something Belia would wear. And something to you know, like under, yeah, under the color timer, there's a yellow V. Why don't they put victory in the fusion? That's, that's just funny to me, ironically. Geese series yeah. was my, my third favorite new gen series. And because of that, I, I like to see Riku return, but not like this. Not like this. Well, actually, um, sorry, uh, sorry to correct you, but actually that V shape is the crest. His color timer is pretty much... No, I mean under the color timer. I mean under the color timer. All right. Oh, sorry. I don't know. In my opinion, I'd say probably um, Gamma Future's crest looks more like a V than Jesus. Kind of like too wonky to resemble a V for me. Ultraman Geed Galaxy Rising. My God, that's the ugliest thing that I ever seen. The Ultraman franchise. That thing just looks terrible. It looks disgusting. Completely horrible. My goodness. First, I I, I thought Gid's Gid's other fuse are the ugly, but this this is the ultimate ugly thing I ever saw on this franchise. My God. Uh, okay. Firstly, I don't really understand why Gid's is there. I mean, I understand the whole thing of the circle that Alex was talking about. Uh, Zero was a secondary character on G, but and Geet's now a secondary character on Z. It doesn't make it just doesn't make sense with for me because Geet has already his own series, and with Zero, I kind of understand that that world on Geet because he doesn't even have his his own series. But Geet got his own shows already, his own show already. So why he needs to be a secondary character in you know, another Ultra show? That's completely bullshit, in my opinion. And and Rico, oh my God, we're gonna see that 
that fucking annoyed kid of Riku again. Oh my god, let's see that pastor again. See the same lines over and over again before he starts to transform me. Like, oh my fucking god, we're going to hear these lines again. Oh my god. God, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and and speaking of the design, yeah, the design is trash. But if you if you look at if you look closely, it kind of looks like Grisa from Ultraman X. It really looks like Grisa. And the fusion material, eh, as much as I hate it, I hate Git being there, and I hate the, the design, and I hate this fusion. Yeah, the fusion material is kind of and kind of understandable. Yeah, understandable. Yeah. Because it's, it's the, uh, the the previous ultras who came before then. I mean, just like Zero Beyond, Zero Beyond used Ginga X and uh, and Victor and Or, but now they're they're only excluding Victory because like they can only use tr they can only fuse three ultras, not four. But I think they they own the, and they might fuse four um, later on. I don't I'm not sure. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I have to say about this tra this crappy gear. Just this. Uh, organic demo, demo like shape. Oh my god! Yeah, let's you can you can go now. Oh, well, Masura. Uh, what are your thoughts on big on Ultra Chungus? Fuck off, Alex. You can go now. Wow, rude. All right, now it's my turn to talk about the brand new Ultraman Gate Fusion Galaxy Rising. Now, for me personally, I think it's really riveting to see Ultraman Geed come back. I, I'm i usually known as a person who defends Ultraman Geed, especially when there are people who really don't like Geed. And my only phrase that I have for this form is that sitting around and doing nothing will get us nowhere. But in this case, if you take a look to the Galaxy Rising Fusion, um, I'm going to credit myself again, but I was the first person to actually point out that it looked like Grisa, not only on the Discord server, but also on YouTube. So, I really do think it looks similar to Grisa. Now, I think that if this was an alien, and they just swapped the head and put some other alien head there, this would be a really nice final villain, or half-series villain, because it has that kind of design of a... Sort of yeah. monstrous form, well, like ADF stuff. Real quick, real quick, real quick. I was talking about this. That if they if they use Gid as the main villain, it would be nice because this form makes him look like a villain. Yeah. And then the whole the whole form just seems really really weird. It just it's a whole mess. That's all I could say about it. You have these dark blues and blacks on the core body but then you have these brighter blue shoulder pads that look as if they come from an entirely different design you have these yellow spikes that come out of the legs and the arms the red on the boots and the hip it just it's it shares no it shares no it shares no similar 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 it shares no part of the size with a giga x and orb for what i can see like I said, I think all the blue on this form is supposed to be, you know, like uh, a reference to Ginga's blue crystals, but there's nothing about this at all that looks crystalline, um, and there's nothing about it that looks digital, like X, it just looks like really bulky armor. How dare they call that fusion Xs? How dare they have X in there? Now, the fusion ISIS. Now I'm gonna play devil's advocate as I usually do because not many people like me, of course. But if you take a look to Ultraman Geed, Zero Beyond looked nothing like Ginga or Victory or X. So I'd say that when it comes to a yeah, second, yeah, it kind of makes it kind of makes sense for it for it, for that that ugly fusion to look like then. So I would say that in regards to a secondary Ultraman character having their own fusion in the series, they don't necessarily have to look like the Ultras they fuse with, because Zero Beyond doesn't really look anything like Geed, X, Victory, or Orb. So I'd say the same thing would go for Geed, because as Ryan said, Geed is playing a very similar role to Zero, and Zero's fusion in Ultraman Geed looks nothing like the Ultra fusions he has, so I'd say the same thing makes sense for Geed, because... The same thing happened for Zero, just from that perspective, since they swap places in the series. But I will say, though, if you really look closely, 
the body design has this sort of, under all this armor and hunk and junk, you can see that Ultraman Geed has this sort of black, uh, black bodysuit, kind of similar to the primitive form, but it's black and blue. And I would have just preferred if they just stripped off the armor and literally just made Ultraman Geed black and blue, but it's primitive. Because I think that's really cool, because Ultraman Geed doesn't really have a black form, but it's also digitized like the blue from Ultraman X. And I personally just would have been satisfied with that, but instead they gave us this exterior exo-body armor. And what I even noticed, if you look closely, is that around the ribcage, it looks as if Ultraman Geed has bone-like ribs protruding out of his back. I mean, what... What is this design? I honestly don't know. I know I defend Ultraman Geed, and I, I know I like Ultraman Geed, but this design just, it really perplexes me. It just, it's shocking that this actually exists. I, I guess, it. it's, it, I guess that logic is, is just too terrible. It's still worth it. I guess that logic seen. is just to, um, you know, pour hours of time and effort into, into a lot of Zets forms, and then Geed, you know, he's a secondary ultra, so who gives a shit? Just get um, Uncle Barry to throw it together in 20 minutes when, you know, Alex, the kaiju kek, could do it much better, clearly. Because your idea actually sounds good and Thanks. makes sense. And I know, like, like you said, um, which is something I didn't think about, but, you know, Zero Beyond didn't look like the ultras he was supposed to be... Um, a fusion of, but at least with Zero Beyond, in my opinion at least, you know, it looked good, like it had a pleasing colour scheme and Yeah, i definitely say that about Zero Beyond it, it had a kind of purplish tint, which as Ryan said before, you don't really see too much in Ultraman So I thought like, that was really I don't cool. know, I don't know if maybe it's just me looking too far into things as I like to, but I feel like maybe the idea was that since it, there's so many ultras that you know that Zero is fusing with, rather than trying to incorporate details from every single one and just turning it into a clusterfuck like Galaxy Rising, they instead maybe it's like you know all the different colors just blend into the purple on Zero Beyond, and they just have the silver. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That, that's what I'm about to say. Um, Galax uh, Zero's Beyond wasn't really meant to use the design aspects of the four ultras you fused with. It's just purple. None of those ultras use purple. What people have like problems with the Galaxy Rising form is that it 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 tries to incorporate some things in in Axis, Gingas, and uh, Orbs, but it fails miserably. Zero Beyond, it doesn't use any design aspects. It's just um, use those four powers but make a completely new form. That's why people have some problem with. Uh... Yeah, and don't I, forget, I... and don't forget that Zero Beyond doesn't use any attacks from the ultras he fills with to get Zero Beyond. I agree, but for me personally, at least, I just if you look at the suit and you take off the armor, if you really look at the suit under all that armor, Ultraman Geed's core body is just black and blue. It's a black suit of primitive with blue lines on it, and I would have just preferred if they had just used that, because it would have been simple, but really unique, because we've never had a black and blue Ultraman, well, at least a predominantly black Ultraman with blue colors, that was a good Ultraman. So I think that would have been cool, because then it would have showed that Geed has this sort of dark color to him, but he's defying his face, he's defying his lineage to Belial, because that's the whole point of his character. And I would have really preferred if they had just done that, because if you look at Zero Beyond, it's basically the similar concept with taking a very simple color palette, but having it be really powerful and unique. And so I just think that this was a really missed opportunity, to be honest, overall. Uh, yeah, that's yeah that's really terrible. Terrible. one thing that I forgot to mention, how the hell did they come, they come up with that name, Galaxy Rising? That name is just too, they just seem too generic for me. I mean, Galaxy Rising, they just took two words in English, they mixed together. I know they did that before with like, Ultimate Final, or Trinity, uh, and all the uh, Snake Darkness, and all that shit, but man, Subrite Productive, they, they need to get better names, because like, 
<laughs> just names are just so too generic. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. I prefer Galaxy Rising a little bit more than Ultimate Final. That's just me, at least. I thought Ultimate Final was a. It's funny because in my Ultraman Geed movie review, I said that Ultraman Geed's final form in the movie Ultimate Final had a hilariously ridiculous name, and then I said that Snake Darkness was a pretty silly name for the monster in the movie for the Rue movie. But I think Galaxy Rising is. It's a little bit better than Ultimate Final in terms of naming. It, it's, it's generic, it's generic, but it's the good kind of generic. It's not complicated to remember. Yeah, and I will say this though, just from a design standpoint, Ultraman Geet's forms have gone from looking really powerful to looking significantly weak. Because, in my opinion at least, the strongest looking Ultraman Geet form is the Mega Monster, I mean, what was it called? Mega Master? Royal Mega Master? Royal Mega, 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 Mega Master. I think Royal Mega Master, from a design standpoint, looks like the strongest Ultraman Geed form. But of course it's not, because Ultimate Final and now this Galaxy Rising exist. I didn't really care for Ultimate Final's design that much. I thought it was just primitive, with some gray attached to it, and some different patterns. And then this form, I don't even know what to think of it. It's just... It's a mess. So, so which which geek form is stronger, uh, ultimate ultimate uh, like final or this one, Galaxy Rising? Which one is more powerful? Like uh, as a technical standpoint. I don't know to be honest. Which one is more powerful? Uh, uh, if you guys don't mind, I just need to leave for a minute. I'll be back soon. All right. And so, I guess we're done with all the fusions. I wanted to move on to some things that we hope and some things that were also featured in the video, such as the human team and some monsters that appeared. But just for a quick overall, do you guys want to give your thoughts on all the fusions overall? I mean, we, we, did, it, we did it already. If you meet the fusion materials and the, to and the toys, yeah. Um, I like the fusions a lot. Um, I, well, well, actually, I'm more half and half. Actually, um, I like I really like Gamma Future because Tika Danagaya, and I also like G Galaxy Rising because it is cool to see G get a form, this get a form, still get a new form, and um, which also brings up the question: Will G actually get a remix of his battle theme like uh, Zero did in G? But we'll have to wait and find out. Um, but um. Um, but I really, but um, I really like those two. But I'm not, re I wasn't really a fan of Alpha Edge or Beta Beta Smash. All right, I'm back. Uh, what are you guys talking about now? Oh, uh, just give uh, just an overall general view of the fusions. To me, All the right. fusions look decent, decently, decently fused. It, it it looks good. It looks. It doesn't look like a like a cluster, like 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 a cluster, but. It looks decent. I think. Yeah, yeah. The fusions I like still. The one of the one of the failed things that I like about that that video. Yeah, uh, uh, how to name that thing? A bad beta smash. It's it's the coolest one for me. I like Gamma Future too. Um, I like the one that I like the Emilio Slugger rip it off. I forgot his name. It it Alpha Edgy and yeah, something like that. Uh, oh yeah, that's. It's his name. That's it. That's it. Uh, I like the Emilio's little rip it off. As as aside from the the two metal parts on his body, and I hated the the Geed fusion. I mean, I don't actually. I I, I think Geed's pretty unnecessary to be on, on on this show since he I really had his own show. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess that's it. Overall, I'm pretty optimistic for this series, as I've said before, but I think the, fu the Fusion Axe aspect looks like it might be the weakest link in the series because, like I said earlier, in Orb and Jeed, the whole Fusion thing served you know, a thematic purpose because in Orb, he was afraid to use his powers because um, he didn't want to hurt people anymore, like he did Natasha, and they purposely held off from showing his original form and they never and to my memory they never actually revealed us in any magazines or anything and indeed um again he couldn't access 
his original form and it was kind of defying his fate using the powers of good ultras instead of his father. So I imagine it's probably going to be there from the beginning. So it doesn't feel like there's any real reason for him to use these fusions. And it's just a tired concept at this point. Like, you know, Orb pulled it off really well, in my opinion. And Jeed, as much as I dislike the show, again, it pulled off the concept well. And both shows, the fusions were all very... Each one was very, you know, distinct. And they had their own kind of style to them. And they were all very visually appealing. The fusions in this one range from just god-awful, in the case of Jeed's new form, to just decent at best. And that's pretty much all I have to say. For me personally... I have to say that Gamma Future is definitely my favorite of the bunch. It's really riveting to see that Tiga, Dinah, and Gaia can come together once more. I think that the unique aspect of having a psychic, magical-based Ultraman is really unique, because that is something I had kind of been wanting to see. I'd always thought that Ultraman had always been based on either speed, power, or somewhere in the middle. Ultraman Tiger is a great example of that. You have somebody who's strong, somebody who's fast, and then somebody who's just versatile, all around jack of all trades. But in the case of this fusion, Gamma Future, I think it adds a third element to it, where he has different beam attacks and he's basically magical. And I'm really excited to see what they do with that. Beta Smash, hit or miss. I just think he's okay. Alpha Edge, I really don't like that much. And then. Galaxy I so don't like. I so don't like that one. It's because it's too metal on on his on his body. I mean, it, it still looks fine, but it just kind of looks too overhyped for me. And that thing looks like a. I mean, that form looks like a Emilio Slugger rip it off. Now, as I was saying about Galaxy Rising, <clears throat> I personally think that the form looks pretty interesting. I think that a lot of people don't really like it too much, but in general, though, I think people will stop complaining once it actually happens. It's kind of similar to how Ultraman X had headphones on his head, and everybody was making jokes about that and complaining about that in the comment section, but once Ultraman X came out, everybody completely forgot about that detail. Even I did. I forgot that he had the little headphone things. I remember people thought Ultraman X was going to be silly because he's going to wear monster armors, but now that's one of the more unique concepts in the show. I remember people thought it was ridiculous that you were going to be fusing Ultras together and that it wasn't even a movie, and then everyone likes Ultraman Orb. I think that as time will go on, people will eventually adjust and come to accept or really like these different aspects. It's just well, that in terms of first impressions, people may be skeptical about it, you know? Well, I guess... At the end of the day, it's less, you know, it's criticizing the designs, but not really criticizing the show. And um, personally, I've always been more of a sci-fi guy than a fantasy guy, but I do agree with Alex that it's nice to see a magical show, even if I don't think it really makes sense considering the components, because Ultraman has always been pretty much sci-fi, so it'd be nice to if maybe eventually the Ultra series could have its own equivalent to uh, like how Sentai had Ju Ranger and Magi Ranger, which introduced more fantastical elements. Oh yeah, and oh yeah. Now that eight stuff say Magi, um, oh oh no, oh no, oh forget, forget, just forget, just forget, just forget, just forget, just forget, forget. Okay. Go on. So moving on to the next aspect, we can talk about the rest of the video clip where we saw the human monster team as well as some returning monsters in the first few clips. So we can let everybody talk about that. I'm going to be right back real quick and you guys can just talk about what your thoughts on the rest of the video were where we saw some two returning monsters that I think some people are excited about. Uh, I really like the, the idea of storage and the ability of them using robots. I mean... It, it's it's given them the ability to bring back Windom from Ultra Galaxy in such a in you know I mean from uh, Ultra Seven, and it's really cool to see him come back since we haven't seen him since Ultra Galaxy Legend. That's what I meant to say. Um, but um, 
It's really cool to see him, and it's really cool that him and Z are going to be teaming up and fighting against monsters, and I really can't wait to see how they're going to have Windom and Z team up to be really cool Ultraman. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know if it's just me that um, picks up on it, but I get but I get the feeling that this series is going to have a much more grounded, realistic, kind of military militaristic tone to it because in the trailer it's brief but you see scenes of people you know running screaming and obviously you know monster attacks is nothing new to uh, to ultraman but a lot of the times you don't see you know the effects that it has on people except for the cases of series like ultra 7 the return of ultraman ultraman leo ultraman ace where a lot of times You'll see the effects that these attacks have on people. You know, you'll see people, you'll see civilians die. You'll see people's homes be destroyed. You'll see how people deal with their relatives and friends being killed in monster attacks. And that, along with the way the attack team is presented, like they seem to have much more realistic uniforms. And you, and you see Savengar being constructed with all the, um, like, I don't know what it is around him. It just gives me the the idea that this is going to go for a more realistic, grounded um, tone that's similar to Ultra 7 and Return of Ultraman. And those are two of my favourite Ultra series. So it would be nice um, to see where, where they go with them. And also, it's no secret that I'm a fanboy for Ultraman Leo, so it's great to see Savengwa return. He's definitely the most underrated capsule monster for me, so I'm excited to see what they do with him. And, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. Wyndham and the Ultra 7 capsule monsters return, which is nice. We haven't seen them in a long time. And other than that, the attack teams look like attack teams. They look normal. And... I just have nothing else to say. I'm, I the kaiju's. I don't really know them to be honest. That's all I have to say. Yeah, my turn now. Uh, yeah, I also don't have. Mo I don't have much of to say about the the attack team and the kaiju's because we didn't see any of them uh, yet. So we just saw Windom and Savunger. and it's pretty. And it, also, it's pretty interesting to see Savunger and Winner together. Uh, especially because uh, I remember like two two years ago I was talking with a guy on Discord called Yahweh All Nine. He was yeah I was I, we were talking about the show Ultraman series, and then we he came out that uh, Sevunga is an open gray version of Window. Jack and Lee could have even beat them alone, but Sevunga almost beat beat Ashura. So I I'm kind of I kind of excited to see who uh, Sevunga is gonna kick kick. And yeah, that's that's all. Which I really like. So, so real quick, I forgot. I, I got forgot to give more. I I I hope that on the future with the, with the return of Seven, they make a uh, they make a uh, uh, Kaiju Girl season three because I'm really excited to see a uh, a Kaiju version, of, a Kaiju Girl version of Seven. It will be really nice if this happens. Okay. Um, for my personal thoughts, I'm really excited to see what this attack team possesses. I'm going to be honest, Ultraman Taiga had, what, a security force, special cases, investigation force, which it was pretty neat to see them have human fights with the different aliens that they came about. But for me personally, they couldn't really do much of anything against a significantly larger threat. So hopefully this team has a few moments where they're able to successfully defeat or neutralize a monster because just quick, it might quick, quick, quick. just real quick because they on tag they 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 don't have the attack vehicles so that's why they can't do much against the monsters i was getting ready to get to that now somebody oh. on the discord server strange advent also known as s9y advent a few days ago stated that the human attack team should be able to use mechas to fight off against the monsters. 
And I thought, what an absolutely ingenious concept. You know, you have all these different robots that exist in Ultraman, but the human teams never really use them. I think the closest we really got to the humans being able to fight back with the robots was probably in Ultraman X. That's the most recent example that comes to mind where Zeo was able to use Mechagamora to but fight alongside... But don't we, but don't we get this already in Mebius, like the uh, the guys members using uh, Windows? I said it was the most recent uh, example. Uh, now that's what I was saying. I'm really excited to see Windom come back because, not to self promote, but I actually uploaded a video of Ultra Seven with Windom in it being killed by alien guts, and I specifically chose the English dub because I thought it was absolutely hilarious. It's some of the most quotable material in Ultraman for me. Get back in your car, female. That's one of the best lines in all of Ultraman dubbing history, in my opinion. The whole scene is just hilarious, and I just wanted to share it. And then Wyndham comes back in Ultraman Z, and I'm thinking, wow, this is what a coincidence. I was really excited for that. And then Svengar from Ultraman Leo, it's really nice to see him come back, because I didn't really think he was going to return. He hadn't been in anything for so long, and I think it's really cool that they're bringing back a lot more of the obscure monsters. But for me personally, though, I will say this about, what was it, um, Ultraman Taiga. I really hope that they utilize a lot more of the grounded fights as well and try to be unique in some of the choreography. I think that the Ultraman Ace and Taro form will incorporate some wrestling moves, which will definitely be pretty interesting. I definitely am excited to see what's in store. So yeah, that's overall what I think about the rest of the video. Well, actually, um, just to... Uh... Build on what you said about the Ace and Toro form. Um, as we mentioned before, Ace was extremely brutal, and I think even the original Ultraman was to an extent. You know, he had some pretty violent moments. So I think, since by the looks of it, this series is going to be a lot darker than what we've got in the past, it would be nice to maybe see this Ultra um, brutalize a few enemies, especially since he does have a slugger. Also, um. As I've said before, I'm really excited to see Savengar return because, in my opinion, he had one of the, he had a really great episode. They introduced him; and it was one of the best of Leo. And unfortunately, they never used him again. And he also has a very unique, very unique, I mean, um, fighting style because um, in the, his fight with Asheran, you know, he's very his hits feel very swift, and you really feel the impact. Yeah, he almost. Them. And he uses like magnetism as well, so it's pretty cool seeing to return. But what are you gonna say, Mister? And to be to be honest, I I I kind of understand that some people uh, t uh, say that uh, beta uh, beta smash is gonna be one of the strongest ones, especially because Ace was too br brutal back then in the show era. But I don't think uh, beta smash we're gonna we're gonna get so much attention because. I remember, like on Ultraman Orb and Ultraman Gear, they second formed like Burn Might and Slug, uh, uh, Solid Burning. They didn't get much episode, uh, much uh, much fights on the episodes. I mean, they only got like three, three or five, three, two or two or three fights, and then they they got overshadowed by the the the, the other forms. I think the the same thing will happen. The same thing is gonna happen to the Beta Smash because like the second fusions, it always get on this way. So I kind of I kind of hope they don't do this because it's gonna be too such a such a disappointment because like on Orb he got he used Bar Might like on oh, I guess a uh, three episodes <laughs> then he got overshadowed by a Hurricane Slash that got the that got used on pretty much almost every episode except for some some fair ones and and Gid and Gid Solid Burning he uh, he was barely using the Gid series because he got too overshadowed by Primitive and and very mega master because on Gid's second half, he out he he uh, Gid's second half was, was pretty much just primitive real mega master primitive real mega master. So I I hope uh, they give a bit more of that. So I get I get I hope they give the enough attention that put a uh, beta um, smash dessert because. Because of the fusion material, that really because if they did that, it's gonna really be respectful for the fusion materials such as Ace and Taro, especially Ace who who who, who is never using a fusion material on the TV shows, and and I still don't count a fusion fight from Slugger Ace. 
that's a fair point. Although I feel like if, um, as I'm hoping, he does have a more brutal fighting style, I feel like maybe if he is only used a few times, that could help make his fights feel a lot more impactful if he uses brute force on the enemies, you know, that really enrage him and perhaps deserve it more than, you know, uh, kaiju that are basically just animals, you know, just living. So... Maybe yeah. maybe you can use the... Yeah, this is just a prompt I have in my head, but maybe we can use the uh, Z getting, like, two worked up in defeating a kaiju, absolutely demolishing it, decapitation and all that, and that's how Zero teaches Z not to use its anger too much. Maybe that's just a, an idea I have in my head. Yeah, the, one thing that, yeah. Yeah. the one thing that I hope for, for, for Beta Smash is that they don't they just don't use much of attacks or just the original uh, and Taro because as Ace kind of a bit overshadowed by Ultraman 7 Taro uh, I, I, I hope they they give more I give I hope they give uh, I hope they don't give much more attacks from Ultraman and Taro and give Ace some farewells because it's gonna be so disappointing if Ace gets fail attacks of reference. And on Ace's recent appearance, he always used the vertical guillotine a lot. He, he forget that he has a lot of other guillotine moves and and his sword. And I so hope that he he that Beta Smash get get some reference with Ace's Ace's blade that we. It's the sword that he used on on Doragoris and Spionix in the series, but he never used ever again because the he, the all the other moves got overshadowed by Ace's magical guillotine, and that's so annoying because Ace for, I always forget that he has other other moves to to use. Uh, just like Jack, we, whenever he Jack appears, he always used the Ultra Lens. He forget that he has the Ultra Spark, Ultra Cross. Yeah, that's really annoying for the show for a for show Ultra fan. The, the, all the other attacks got overshadowed by some of their ones. That would be nice to see. Maybe, maybe it's just because you know, obviously Ultraman is my favorite franchise, but I do like Toei as well. So maybe it's just that. But I do like to see Ultras use weapons from time to time. And like you said, Monsieur, it is it's a shame that uh, a lot of Jack's weapons are pretty underused because having a cross as a weapon is something you very rarely see in pretty much. Any kind of um, and, series and one thing that I don't, and one thing that I don't understand, and one thing that I don't understand is that Jack only used the Ultra Lens once in this series, and he used the Ultra Cross like twins. So what's the point of using the Ultra Lens all the time? He barely used the Ultra Spark anymore, and he used the Ultra Spark a lot on this series. He only used the Ultra Lens once, so I don't really understand how much love the Ultra Lens got. And I kind of afraid that if Jack come back next year, because you know it's gonna be Jack's for uh, to, uh, 50 anniversary. I kind of, I would kind of afraid if he used the Ultra Lens again. Kind of really tired of seeing Jack use the Ultra Lens again. He doesn't, he doesn't use the Ultra Cross. He doesn't use the Ultra Spire. He never used the Ultra Hurricane again. That's but true. that's uh, just my point. And I, and I hope the same thing doesn't happen. Uh, it doesn't happen with Ace on his uh, to, uh, 30, uh, uh, 50th anniversary. Now, for me personally, I think that this series has a great deal of potential. I finished watching Ultraman Taiga, and one thing that I really hope... Actually, there are two things I am hoping for Ultraman Z, and one of them is... A little bit more sequel episodes. I know Ryan can definitely agree with me on this, but Alien Knackle was one of the best episodes in Ultraman Taiga. I definitely say it was extremely memorable. And for me personally, at least, no one else will probably f share the sentiment but me. Alien Parolinga's episode was really emotional for me to watch because just seeing it all come back again 51 years later was really riveting. But the second thing I really hope for Ultraman Z is to see a theme within its storytelling. I would say that Ultraman Taiga worked really well because it had a core theme to emphasize a lot of its values and messages to the audience. And the message that I got from Ultraman Taiga was the message of acceptance and tolerance. Because throughout the oh. show... What? Oh, sorry, carry on. I'll say after you finish. I'm sorry. Throughout the show, we could definitely see that human society has discriminated against and shunned aliens which is 
pretty ironic that they use the term aliens because that has real life connotations. But also, if you take a look to the aliens, a lot of them are everyday people trying to make their way in the universe, literally and figuratively. And some of them even look like humans. So I think the whole point of Taika was to show that the different aliens that existed in Ultraman are not too different from you and I as human beings. And they have families, they have aspirations, they have goals and desires as well, and shouldn't be treated as anything worse or lower. So I really hope that Ultraman Z has a core theme that the audience can take away and apply to reality, because that's what makes Ultraman a much bigger series than just giant aliens fighting giant monsters or robots or other aliens. That's what makes it have a sort of real-life value to it, when it has a sort of lesson to teach of morality. Yeah, what are you going to say, Oh, I was just going to say, I, I just, uh, just, just one quick, just one quick. Uh, I forgot to give one more hope for Beta Smash. I hope uh, if Beta Smash had, had some slice move, uh, pr probably it's going to have because Ace is guillotine prints and because of Ultraman's Ultra Slash. I hope he, he, he decapitates someone because the, only, the biggest pro, one of the biggest problems with the new generation series is, because, is that the new generation Ultras do, do, don't decapitate anything. They, every time they use uh, like a slashing move, they always they always blow up the monster instead. They decapitate the monster instead. They cut monster off. They always blow up the monster instead. It's pretty, it's, it's, it's too ridiculous. Back in the show era, it was they uh, Jack just used the Ultra Spark and then he cut off the monster. And now they are just blowing up. I just hope that with Beta Smash he, he can decapitate someone because. I kind of tired to see that these new ultras using a, a slashing attack and then the monster, the, the monsters blow up instead of uh, the god decapitates. But yeah, um, what I was going to say though, um, I definitely agree with Alex. I feel like that was one of the strongest aspects of um, Tiger, because a lot of other series will also try to handle tackle social issues, and I think the Ultraman is the one that does it the best in my opinion because um you know it doesn't feel ham-fisted and with a lot of other franchises like the past couple of seasons of doctor who when they've tried to tackle issues like racism a lot of the times it feels really ham-fisted and ironically you get the idea that they're um shitting on white males at the same time but with tiger i think it handled the issue really well where I mean, it wasn't like completely subtle, but it didn't feel like it was completely in your face. It they didn't put it over good, you know, characters and writing. And I definitely respect the message that they try to send out, especially since Japan to this day is still a very conservative society, which unfortunately does still have racial issues. And I feel like if they are going to have a similar kind of theme in Zet. That maybe um, war would be a good one to go with because, you know, as I as I mentioned before, it seems like this one's gonna have a more militaristic tone to it, and that is something that has been touched on slightly in the past, like with um, the Alien Pegasus episode in Ultra Seven and the Gamma Rot episode in Ultraman Leo, as well as the uh, the Gas Kaiju episode in Return of Ultraman, kind of show, you know, how things that were created for a war in the end end up coming coming back and uh, biting their creators in the ass and because in the case of Pegasaur and Ganarot they ended up their planets were destroyed and the gas kaiju in return um, forced one of the map members you know to face his history and kill a lot of people in some pretty disturbing scenes. So I feel like that would be, that might be something they go for in this series. Yeah, I definitely agree. I personally haven't watched Doctor Who 80 of stuff. I've been meaning to go to it because I know the lore is extremely rich, even bigger than Star Wars I've heard in some aspects. But I know that in some movies today, especially in Hollywood, if you take a look to Star Wars, um, even video games such as Overwatch or event or Marvel movies or even sitcoms, they try to really push this sort of social agenda, leftist liberal message, 
And I understand that those are crucial issues that should be addressed to people, but it's there's a difference. There's a blur between entertainment and the sort of agenda that usually goes on within the media industry. But I would say that Ultraman Taiga finds a really nice fine line between the two, where it manages to have an entertaining story of good versus evil, as Ultraman usually is, but also have a sort of social commentary that goes on within it. And I wanted to real quick mention one of the characters in Ultraman Taiga, whose name was Pirika. I know that the ending episode was very controversial because she turned out to be an android, but I think that actually fits into the entire theme of the show because the show, no matter if you're a human, an alien, an android, you could still be a fun, relatable person, have dreams and aspirations and goals. It doesn't matter what your background is, but you could still have all those same aspects. So I think even though from a writing standpoint, it didn't make sense for Pirika to all of a sudden just be an android out of the blue, I think it fits into the theme that they were trying to go for, personally. Yeah, I definitely... I definitely agree, because, um, I mean, in my opinion, Pirika was probably the weakest character in the show, but I did think those final two episodes were really strong, and I like how she was, um, you know, she was built with the sole purpose of defeating Wula, and she didn't really have any kind of personality or anything. But because of yeah, how... Yeah, because you only get one focus episode, and the rest of the episode just, just focus on the other characters and leave her behind. So I guess the point of her becoming Android it was just for her, her cat to become a bit more member, aside just because the, the, the entire show didn't focus on her, aside for one episode. Yeah, but like I was saying, though, um, you know, she thought, you know, she was pretty much completely robotic which makes sense since she was a robot but because of how quickly everybody at um Ugis, i think that's what it was called were to accept her you know she became her own like fun person and i think that was a really strong message that i can definitely respect even if i'm not a fan of pirica as a character Yeah, I definitely agree. I really hope that Ultraman Z definitely continues this trend along forward, because as you said, ADF stuff, they're definitely going with a more militaristic approach, and I really hope that they do more. I think the moment where Ultraman really started to kind of tip its toes a little bit in the water for these different types of messages was back in the Ultraman Room movie, when I believe the monster Snake Darkness was talking to Rosso, and he said, oh... You're going to destroy me. Well, monsters are alive, too. And Ultraman Rosso had to actually think. It's such an insignificant moment because it's only in the movie for about, I think, 30 seconds or so that happens out of this one hour or something movie. But I think that was the aspect where Ultraman sort of went back into dipping its, tipping its toes into the water of trying to have a social commentary. And Taiga was where they went full on for that different type of theme and core message. So hopefully Ultraman Z does that, because I think a lot more of the story, plot-driven stories, especially if you compare Ultraman Leo, a much darker series, which I have been watching, sort of, along with Ultraman Jack. I'm kind of switching back and forth between Jack, Leo, and Live Man. But if you take a look to Ultraman Leo, it's definitely a lot more of a darker, grittier series. And same thing with Ultra yeah. 7, which I had already watched. So hopefully they take those lessons, because even Ultraman Taiga had sequel episodes to those different series. I, I yeah I think because um, it's something we didn't really see in the Heisei era, but I think the whole social commentary approach was one of the stronger aspects of the Showa era because even in the original Ultraman, you know, you have episodes like Jamila, which in my opinion was the greatest episode of the series and one of the greatest episodes in like TV history because it did have a really strong message about. You know the way the government treats its treats people in general, and it was you know it had one of the most tragic emotional endings in an episode, and I think Wu's episode in the original Ultraman as well was a really strong allegory for racism that felt straight out of Tiger, and both yes. Seven and Return had a lot of those kind of stories as well. I'm. Uh, I want to say something. Um, you guys are talking about monsters and and, and aliens on being like uh, like humans, right? 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and we kind of get like one uh, one episode of Ultimate Cosmos. I know a lot. I know that n any of you guys never watch Cosmos aside from me. I watched one episode of, uh, because I watched the entire series. And I watch, I remember one episode when Cosmos killed off a monster. And then he got so big. Cosmos killed a monster? Off. I don't remember the episode that much. But they, when I guess when he kills off the monster, he got so pissed off that because he thought that the monster could be could be saved. So he got so pissed off. And all the teen eyes cry because Cosmos killed the monster. I, but I actually don't remember that. The pissed very well. I, I guess the monster die, that dies alone, and then Cosmo got so pissed off. The Musashi and the end of the episode be being like, the monsters are so human. I mean, or like, or kind of like the monsters are so, so like the hum the humans. Ca yeah, something like that. So that's why I'm an itchy because you guys like talking about like aliens on Tiger being like the humans. That's a good analogy. So, so, yeah, but yeah, but uh, you ADS stuff was saying like hey, say didn't do that much, but I guess Cosmo did that, did that, oh, did this perfect on on the aspect of hey, say. I'm not no, sure if this. I definitely. But I'm not. Sure, I but I'm not sure if this logic works with you with the subject you guys are talking about, especially because the it's the uh, they are monsters and not aliens. But what do you think, Alex? I definitely agree any of stuff because for me personally, Gamma is one of my I don't think it's in my top 10 favorite episodes per se unfortunately, but I do remember it quite well and I do like a lot of the political and social commentary especially since it was during the Cold War. I personally somewhat like the Ultraman episodes that dive more into politics and foreign relations. For example, episode 34 and 35 of Ultraman Teak are some of my favorite episodes in the entire in the entire Ultraman Tiga series. Just because they talk more about how aliens can infiltrate different governments and stuff. But either way, though, uh, Sean, while you were gone, we were talking about uh, Wyndham and Savangar and just what we really hope to see in the series. So did you want to say anything? Because I think, I think we're all mostly done, right, guys? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. I've got nothing else to say. Okay. So... Seven and Savang uh, Savangar and Wyndham. It's good to see them back. Though, like I said way earlier, that I haven't really seen much of Ultra Seven, so I don't really know what Savangar can really do. Well, but actually, it's Leo. Sorry, since you're up, but I just felt the need to uh, correct you as um, the ultimate Leo fanboy. Hmm. Anyways, but. It's good to see Wyndham back, especially after his last appearance in Ultra Galaxy, the movie. Because, <clears throat> you know how it's been so long and all that. And what I hope to see, well, I did notice that Svengar, instead of being an Ultra, ca ultra Monster capsule, capsule, or Seven Capsule, whatever, they kind of made him into like a human weapon. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is actually a monster ball. Hmm. Whatever. But I noticed that he is more like a human weapon, and I am going to guess so is Wyndham. But I mean, it isn't the first time Wyndham is in, is used as a human weapon. But I wonder how things would go up. I personally hope that. It would kind of be like what happened in Mebius. Like, they have these Manquet monsters. I believe that's what Mac they're called. Manquet monsters. They yeah. have Windham Mikos. Yeah, the Windham and Savengar. I kind of hope they'd be like that. Otherwise, it's going to be a huge ass base with two or maybe more mech storages with something that enormous. I just hope it ends up being worth it for them. Otherwise, I would I have no problem with Wyndham, though for Savengar, I think I saw earlier in the 
Ultra Discord server from earlier today. It, I wish it could have been Rudian because Rudian would would have seemed to be fit for something like this because it kind of worked well with his team up with Ultraman X. I just don't really see Savengar being much. So, but you know, it is what it. Can we? Can I give out my piece about Galaxy Rising before we end this podcast? Yeah. Okay. Well, Galaxy Rising to me it's a little much, and we've already gone over his transformation device and all, but the design is just a little much, honestly. If you look at the ribs, it kind of makes me think of Ultraman Belly Up Atrocious. Oh okay. yeah, it kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. Kind of look. They kind of look a bit I'm similar. Really kind of does make you think it's belly old atrocious with some of Ultraman Hikari and Victory Knight. If you look at the shin guards or what color, something like that. It's basically armored G. The only thing that's basically the same as his head. I just hope that this form is the only form we'll ever see in G because who knows? May, maybe somewhere in the series they'll probably give him something that will go like something like Zero Beyond. But eh, they better have a good story and they better have a good explanation on how G's G riser broke. <laughs> I don't think so. I I think I think they 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 are doing this for the same excuse that they did with Zero when his ultimate brace broke. So that's why he couldn't use the his other forms. His brace broke because of Ultraman Belly. Oh. Oh yeah. Whatever. I hate. I hate. I hate Git series. So. So yeah. Alex. I I guess we all done with the with the whole thing. Yeah. Well, hey. I must say, Sean. Rock, what? It's so silent. You have something else to say? No, I pretty much give it all my thoughts on this. I must say, Sean, you missed you missed a pretty good run, pretty pretty epic run from a uh, from Massey. It he was almost like famous, um, revered film critic. Oh my! I wish I was there, but I had to go to Zaxby's. Oh, it, it was. It, good. Oh, you, it's fine. You can you can you can hear when when Alex posts the entire video on his channel. Okay. Uh, and it's gonna be a long one. This is gonna be a nightmare to edit. All right. Thank you all yeah. for watching. I Actually, there's just one last thing um, I'd like to say. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but um, I think if they do, if they give him like a final form, like how Jeed had Royal Magnificent or whatever it was called, I think um, a, a good I. Um, the best choice, since obviously you know you want you want the final form to be the most powerful, to be impactful. I think a good combination will be my favorite Beardo, Ultraman King, um, Ultraman Noah, and then um, mm. I don't know which one which one they'll choose, but I think for the final component, the end of, a good end choice would be either um, would be either legend, 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 saga. No. So uh, I think it was interesting. Nice. Nice and Zerf. 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 I was just going to say it should either be nice or Ultra Tonga. Ultra Tonga, yeah, yeah. It should, no, it should be eight Neos and Max because of the only best piece. Ultra, ultra, chungus, ultra, chungus, ultra, ultra, chungus, ultra, ultra, chungus, 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 ultra, chungus,
they don't they don't use Mecha Gomorrah or Kubil and Galactron again because uh, if this happens, oh it's my god. Trinity. I hope it's it's Trinity. Trinity. Yeah, like Ryan said, they make Trinity a Trinity Kai which will be a so much so much unique concept <laughs> instead of used it then separately again. <laughs> So anyway, guys, I just wanted to thank you all for sticking with us to the very end. Thank you all for watching. I hope you folks have enjoyed this video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. If anyone wants to have any final messages, they could say something to the viewer. Also, uh, it's okay. That's a good one. Uh, I'd just like to say um, thank you for inviting me on. It's been fun. Uh, uh, as my first podcast by Alex the Kaiju fan. Thank you Alex for inviting me. It's very pleasant. You're welcome, Zio. And um, if you want to see some awful content, then make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, my, I mean my YouTube channel. YouTube <laughs> channel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Whoever's, whoever's watching this, please join our Discord server. Please join our Discord server. Chong chong chongus da 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 Alright bye everyone Okay bye bye